It's official, the Procurement Act is set to go live soon. That's right, the way the government buys goods and services is about to be turned on its head, as the UK ushers in the biggest change to public procurement since at least 2015. But what changes are being made to procurement frameworks? And what do you need to know to make sure that you're not being left behind? I'm Ben from Tussle, and here's the three major changes the Procurement Act will make to the way frameworks operate. But before we start, what are frameworks? A framework is an agreement established between one or more public sector buyer and one or more supplier. Each framework consists of a list of pre-approved suppliers who've been evaluated and selected to provide a predefined set of services and products. Frameworks can be used by the public sector to call off for new contracts without the need for an open tender process. This speeds up the procurement process and provides a low-cost, low-risk method for public sector bodies to buy from the private sector. However, critics of framework agreements say that they lock out smaller and newer suppliers from winning work with the government. That's because unlike DPSs, framework agreements can only be joined once that's before the framework goes live. If a supplier fails to meet the selection criteria before the framework start date, they'll be locked out of winning any contracts via that framework for the full four years that that framework runs, until it dissolves and a new one is created. So what three changes to frameworks should we expect to see this year? Number one, open frameworks. When the Procurement Act goes live, contracting authorities will have the ability to procure through open frameworks. Similar to regular frameworks, prospective suppliers may bid to join the framework agreement before the framework start date. However, unlike traditional closed frameworks, contracting authorities will be permitted to appoint new suppliers to the framework during its lifetime. Open frameworks may run for up to eight years and can be opened up to new suppliers at least twice whilst they're live. This new framework type is intended to improve flexibility and facilitate a more competitive market. By allowing their frameworks to open up, buyers will be less likely to exclude new suppliers and SMEs from their procurement process. Number two, changes to the call-off process. The 2023 Procurement Act is set to usher in new mechanisms for awarding call-offs via framework types. Currently, contracts awarded via a framework agreement can be awarded either through mini-competitions or via direct award. This is not set to change. However, going forward, contracting authorities may only award a contract directly if the framework sets out the core terms of the contract and an objective mechanism for supplier selection. This reference to core terms replaces all the terms governing the provision of the work, services, and suppliers concerned, which appears in the current procurement regulations. While subtle, this change more accurately reflects the way frameworks are actually used. Proponents of the Procurement Act hope that this change will enable contracting authorities to more easily award contracts directly in situations where such an approach is needed. Number three, call-off information and framework notices. At current, contracting authorities are obligated to publish limited information about contracts awarded under framework agreements. In fact, they're only required to provide the following information on the Contract Finder website. The name of the supplier, the date the contract was entered into, and the value of the contract. Whilst the Cabinet Office guidance recommends the publication of further information, there's no legal requirement for procurement teams to do so. However, going forward, all contracts, so that includes call-off contracts and non-framework contracts alike, will be subject to the same new style contract award notices as well as additional contract details notices. The Cabinet Office hopes that this will improve transparency around what call-offs are being made from frameworks. In addition to the new call-off publishing rules, framework notices published by framework providers will soon be required to contain the following information. A description of the goods, services or works which may be called off from the framework. The price payable or the mechanism for determining the price payable under such contracts the selection process for awarding the call-off contract from the framework, the terms of the framework, 
which contracting authorities are entitled to award contracts under the framework, the estimated value of the framework, and whether the framework is an open framework or a closed one. The idea here is that more data equals more transparency, which is better for the market and should allow the media and public to hold the public sector to account. Are you worried about how the Procurement Act will affect your business? If so, you're not alone. The Procurement Act presents the biggest change to public procurement in almost 10 years, possibly even longer. Tussle's market intelligence platform provides data-driven insights into the public sector market. No matter how the procurement landscape changes in years to come, you'll always be able to rely on Tussle for trusted insight into your target accounts, frameworks, and competitors. Book a demo with the Tussle team to learn how you can start using data to drive public sector sales, future-proof your business, and de-risk your public sector strategy. Send us a message at contact at I've been Ben. Catch you next time.